In today's video, we're taking a look at another flight controller from Rush FPV. Now, this might look like a deja vu to you because you've probably seen this before. However, they actually have an analog variant. The first time we did this video was a digital, and I had no idea there was an analog variant until they reached out to me and said, hey, you didn't know this, but we're sending you some so you could check them out. And there it is. So let's talk a little bit about this. I think they missed one big factor into this, which I would have really loved to see here, but it does carry the same beautiful characteristics as the digital where we have a flush bottom with solder pads. And on the top, you can just use connectors if you like to go the connector route. So now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the accessories that this guy comes with here. So again, this is an F7 flight controller. Unfortunately, there is no 9 volt or 10 volt regulator. So you will be getting a uh, battery voltage down to your video transmitter. So make sure you keep that in mind here. Now for accessories, this is really nice and this is what I really like to see. Now, don't forget, this is a premium price flight controller and you're getting premium priced components along with it. Obviously, silicone wires is a must now. So, for example, we have our ESC connection right here. What's really nice is they didn't give you a standard type of connector where it just works with its own ESC, which is really nice. And they give you connectors here to break it out to whatever ESC you might have here. And you can just route those in there accordingly and you should be good to go, which is really, really nice here. Now for rubber grommets, they give you these, actually give you five of these longer ones. They also give you a bit shorter ones here. And what's really nice also, you're not gonna have a hard time installing them because there's a cutout here, which makes the installation so much more uh, easier here, which is again, really nice. They also do have a cover for the USB right here. If you can see that, let me show you. You can actually remove it. So, you know, it's waterproof ability or water resistance ability. Might be good if we do some conformal coating here for winter and the snow. So it could be probably a pretty interesting project to work on later on. Now we also do have a couple more rubber grommets. I'm not going to go too far into the rubber grommets. And we have a ton of connectors. Now the connectors here are nice. They are self-locking or just basically just clip really. Uh, for example, here we'll take a look at the LED one. And you can see that clip right there. So once you plug that in, it clips. Sometimes a little bit difficult to get out, but that's not going anywhere. So if you're afraid of your connectors falling out, uh, you have a very low probability of that happening, especially with these connectors. And again, don't forget, we can go to the solder route here, which again uh, is really, really good here. Now for a non-experienced user, it might be kind of confusing here to have a connector that looks like this. Now, believe it or not, this is the first time I've ever seen this done. So let's take a look at this real quick. So this is where our camera would go and we could choose the output power and I'll show you how to do that. So we have ground, VCC, cam, and even the menu. So what the hell does that mean? Well, what it does is it routes the OSD wire through itself. So you, they even give you the OSD wire. So, so if you have the OSD remote for your camera, you could just plug that in and just start modifying it, which is really nice. However, they give you another connector, which is exactly identical here, um, a little bit shorter to be exact. And that's meant to go for your receiver. And I know it doesn't really make that much sense, but listen to this. So, so for example, we have these three broken out and these are the main connection, which would be your signal, such as S bus and your power, which would be five volt and ground here, actually 3.3 volt or five volt. You could choose that down here. We'll get into that in a little bit. And if you wanted to use the uh, TX2, for example, telemetry, you can go ahead and set that up. So it's a kind of, it's a nice way. I don't know if it's a nice way. I would have liked to see it just be not even executed into anything, but I guess this is good. You could probably reuse these for something else if you ever wanted to. Um, it's not a bad thing. It's just uh, you'll probably end up having to cut these off anyways to solder directly into your receiver here. Now, next, they also do provide us with just an LED wire that's not terminated into anything other than just a clipped wires, which you could solder onto an LED. Then we have our video transmitter, which will go like this. You'll end up having to cut the wire. More than likely, most people, I'm guessing right now. So mo more than likely or most likely, people will just end up soldering on the backside here, which we're going to take a look at also. Uh, just like this, you basically have a done quadcopter with your ESC connection if you just use the connectors, which is really nice. You just plug that into your camera. Uh, you could cut this off or remove it. And here you'll probably cut these off and just solder your receiver. Here's LEDs, which I don't... I don't think a lot of people use LEDs, but if you wanted to, there it is. And here you go for the video transmitter. We have TX2 for smart audio, which is already prepared for you. VTX, VCC, and ground. Now, if you plug all this stuff in, nothing will power up. And why is that? Well, because you have to choose the voltage output for each section down here. And you will have to slightly solder here. Let's actually grab a closer look at that. 
So here we can see the camera. So if you wanted to give battery voltage, which I never recommend, always five volts. So you'd have to bridge. So you'd have to bridge this one with this one with solder, these two on the right. And I would give the camera five volts. Receiver, you can go 3.3 .3 volt route or the five volt route. More likely you're gonna go the five volt route, which would be this one and this one. Just two of these, make sure you bridge only two. For video transmitter, we have battery voltage and five volt. No nine volt, no eight volt, no 10 volt, none of that. So you see either battery voltage or five volts. So make sure you know your video transmitter's input voltage before plugging it in. Again, once you plug all this stuff in and you turn it on, you find out that nothing's powering on. Well, it's because you need to enable the power for each section here. Now, and again, like I mentioned before, everything is broken out on the bottom. We have the motor outputs, we have the current, we even have ESC telemetry on RX3. We have six motor outputs, so if you want to build the hex, which is kind of probably going to be a new trend for a bit here. This side here, it's kind of meant for a GPS kind of setup, but you could use this for whatever you want right there. Uh, we also do have buzzer here in this area. And um, yeah, you just have everything you ever need. It's a really nice flight controller, like really nice. It's protected. And this metal here is, is not really doing any kind of heat dissipation, as you can tell. It's just more of a protection kind of uh, for the connectors and uh, just doing something a little bit different than usual. And it would be really nice to pop off this metal piece and do some conformal coating on this later on for a project. And well, that's really it, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. There's really nothing else I could say. Uh, they have a digital version, which doesn't have the OSD, but has a 10 volt regulator or a 9 volt. I forgot. Let's actually double check that. It has a 10 volt regulator. So you can go whatever route. If you want to go analog, you go analog. If you want to digital, you go digital. However, I personally always like to prefer to have them both into one because all you just need to do uh, to an analog one is just add a nine volt regulator and that's about it really. Um, that's what I would have loved to see uh, on these if they make maybe a V3 or something like that or a V2 which combines them together or at least put a nine volt on this guy. And that's it, this would be also a digital as well. And well, everything is linked down below guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you click those links. Those do greatly support the channel, enable me to keep making content. And don't forget to check out my Ask FPV application because there's a lot of crazy cool stuff in there. New features such as product subscription, which will actually check the product when the price drops. And also if there's a coupon, it'll alert you if you subscribe to that product. And there's plenty of other things that are upcoming currently in that application. And also if you ever need help, that's the application to go to. You get people immediately helping you there. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.